Mike Kelly is one of the most in-demand keyboard players working in the 518 area. Whether it be a rockabilly band, a blues band, a roots band, a recording session, gospel stylings, or a cocktail hour or more, keyboardist, vocalist Mike Kelly will bring the right sounds to the occasion. He has been working in our area professionally since the 1970s and has created quite a musical legacy and reputation for himself. In the early 80s, Mike was a founding member of the popular Albany, New York band, The Sharks. They were a seven-piece band with a three-piece horn section, recorded five albums, and gigged tirelessly for 12 years. Mike Kelly was a major songwriter as well as vocalist and keyboardist with The Sharks. The Sharks shared stages with Stevie Ray Vaughan, Little Feet, Tower of Power, and other big-name national acts at the time. After The Sharks, Mike Kelly accepted an invitation to join up with Blotto a group from Albany who achieved national acclaim back in the 1980s with a mix of rock and humor, best encompassed in their song, I Want to Be a Lifeguard. Also at that time, Mike did a stint with the Albany area-based blues man, Ernie Williams, and got to open for B.B. King and Aretha Franklin. After this phase of Mike's career, he became somewhat of a keyboard player for hire. Along with his own trio, trio called Circle of Willis, he performed with rockabilly artists such as Wanda Jackson, The Luster Kings, Johnny Rabb, Graham Tichy, John Cribbs, and more of a blues and R&B context with Night Train, Soul Provider, and Delta Blues. Being the versatile musician Mike Kelly is, he also plays in a New Orleans funk-based band called Double B in a New Orleans Drive-By, and in a folk style with the Lost Radio Rounders. He performs jug band music with the Ramblin' Jug Stompers, and over the last few years he has had the opportunity to play with guitarist Todd Nelson and his group, NEQ. Along with Todd, Mike also backed Lonesome Val and played a Fear of Strangers reunion. Some of Mike's more notable recording sessions in recent times have been with Joan Jett and also with the Weasels. Mike is having a lot of success with a new project called the Hammerhead Horns, a band comprised of himself singing and playing piano and is joined by his old bandmates from the Sharks, Bob Button on trumpet and voice, and Jeff Roberts on trombone and tuba, and Bob Assini on cocktail drums and spoons. He specializes in playing old-timey blues, ragtime, Dixieland, and gospel. Whether the job calls for a jazzy Jimmy Smith style of organ, 1960s Farfisa organ sound, or a Dr. John style of piano playing, Mike Kelly will deliver the musical goods, not to mention his vocal and songwriting skills. As a musician, I'm always delighted when I get to share the bandstand with this stellar talent from our 518 area.
Mike Kelly, thanks for sharing your time and music with Empire Radio Sounds. Uh, you're one of the most in-demand keyboard players in our 518 area, and rightfully so. It seems uh, we keep crossing each other's paths, uh, sometimes in three different bands within a month. Uh, I would like to start with a look at your contributions to the Sharks. Uh, as a saxophone sub for the late Tom D'Ambrose in the Sharks' recent reunion gig, I was quite impressed by the songwriting that you, Bob Button, and um, the guitar player had contributed. I forgot his name for a moment here. Jerry Yarrow. Uh, sorry, say it again? Jerry Yarrow. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, anyhow, all your songwriting was great. So um, I truly believe the Sharks had something unique for that time era. Uh, could you share some of your reflections about the songs you wrote and the whole experience of a band doing original material and what that entails in those days, now that we are a bit removed time-wise from that, kind of a long question. It is. Well, no, that's fine. Um, we found it necessary to write our own songs. It wasn't a, some sort of <laughs> divine intervention. We, it was very uh, important that we, we kept up with the other bands of the time, and there was a lot of original music being written, a lot of good stuff. So we, we worked really hard at it. It wasn't something that we really set out to do but that's how the world was and that's how music was in, at least in the pop world in, in Albany mm -hmm. so um, we had to do what we could and uh, some of it came out okay I'll say and oh yeah you know hey what wonderful music it really is uh, I, I was impressed uh, the whole experience was I know it must have been surreal for you guys to come back after all that time and for me yeah. it was incredible <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay, well then, um, we can get back to the Sharks a little bit later and about songwriting, but uh, my next question then is, uh, so perhaps you could tell me a little about 
about your time with Blotto, which was after the Sharks. Right. Yeah. Um, they're very funny, very fun, very good. Yeah. They were doing very good band. It's, it's an honor to be asked to play with them. And uh, I did my best to, you know, just fill in. And they, they named me Hammerhead Blotto. So that name would, would resurface in <laughs> later, <laughs> you know, uh, incarnations. <laughs> um, yeah, they were they were great guys. First of all, I just played golf with Bowtie yesterday. Still, oh, still cool. have a nice relationship. I talk to uh, Broadway on the phone now and then, and we we uh, send emails back and forth. And and Paul Raff too. They're all great guys. Uh, what, what was the uh, idea behind the nick the nicknames? Anything in particular? Or they just thought uh, it was all uh, fun? That, yeah. Well, they they came from a jug band, so they kind of had their own. Uh, the Star Spangled Watchboard Band. So they had these kind of pseudonyms all ready to go. So they tweaked them a little bit, Sarge, uh -huh. Sarge them, but they all kind of were playing that game. So anybody who joined the band had to have some sort of first name and last name. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Broadway decided I would be Hammerhead. I thought of all the sharks, that that's got to be the ugliest of them all. <laughs> What's wrong with great white blotto? But in, in, <laughs> just, I'll tell you just as well if he didn't call me that. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, it could, it could have was been fun. bull shark blotto or <laughs> yeah, yeah, anything. <laughs> but um, yeah, they were they were fun and 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 really good and they get the real showbiz guys. They really got it. Yeah. Okay, well, that brings me to uh, my next question. Uh, after that part of your career, obviously, I, I did a little bit of research on your on your career here. After that part of your career, you worked uh, several well-known uh, rockabilly artists originally in the 518 area, such as your T-shirt here, the Luster Kings. I know. Who, uh, thank you so much again for helping hook me up with them because I'm having a ball working with those Super. guys. You're doing great. They're, they're, they're a lot of fun. And uh, so you also had worked with Johnny Rabb, Graham Titchy and others, Titchy and others. Uh, as a keyboard player, uh, what sort of things do you do to prepare for those type of gigs, these rockabilly type gigs? Well, you know, a lot of them are pretty free. They're not uh, that demanding. So it's not a lot of, luckily I, I came from blues and uh, it applies to that music very easily. Yeah. Yeah. So I can sort of, Kind of go with the flow they're very easy to fall in with there are other groups that are more more demanding as far as you know specific parts and such but that stuff you're pretty free to just feel the, the music and go with it and and you know i've gotten pretty good at that over the years so that's why i guess that and being very lucky to get in, in the first place you know yeah well, that they're, I, they're easy and fun to play with those guys and they're they're all really great god grand i just played with him last week he was a phenomenal player yeah I, I completely agree on that and i think you i think you said it uh with the blues background uh that really fits especially the rockabilly thing but uh it, it's it's a good basis to come from mm -hmm. um Okay, well, as I was reading through your things, uh, what sort of music it is? I don't know anything about this particular band. Uh, Circle of Willis focus on. That's my trio with Bob Cassini, our his shark drummer, and a violinist named Nelson Rock, who lives in Plattsburgh, which is not very convenient. They're not very conducive to uh, gigging, but he comes around. We have three coming up later this month, and it's um, kind of a roots. There's, there's, you know, Cajun country, uh, Celtic, old rock and roll, you know, just in, interesting versions of, of tunes that people might know. We put our own twist on it. It's very, very organic. And he's a wild man on the fiddle. So he'll run around yeah. the room. Oh, really? Very, very animated fellow, Nelson. And um, really? it's good. I mean, people seem to like it. And we book, we get booked every every St. Patrick's Day. They think we're an Irish band. We do some jigs and reels, but we're really not. It's very, I, I know the term roots gets tossed around easily these days, but I don't know what else to call it. It's it kind of that. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to have to check that band out. That sounds oh, yeah. like a lot of fun to watch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Um I know you do some uh, ukulele playing as well as keyboards. Uh, what drew you to that instrument? What did actually? Um, 
I'm not sure. I got one for Christmas one year. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll learn this thing. It's really not that tricky. I think everyone should own a ukulele. <laughs> <laughs> everyone, somebody told me this. I didn't make this. Up. If everybody owned a ukulele, there would be no more war. You know? <laughs> I don't know if that's true. I, I vision people bashing each other over the head with ukuleles, but that's just me. <laughs> that's funny. You know, the everyman instrument, huh? Yeah, right. <laughs> no, it's, it's a peaceful, it's, I, you can sit down and just kind of just strum and, and float away. They're just the wonderful, peaceful, lovely little instruments. I love them. Well, and you can take them anywhere, right? Oh, that's right. It's like yeah. having a chihuahua. <laughs> right, they really are. <laughs> okay. Well, I never. I'm a little I'm obsessed. I, I'm like they're like cats with me. I have like nine now. I've got to. I've got to stop. I need to see somebody. I think without my <laughs> session. With me. Well, it is related to the guitar somewhat, and we mm -hmm. know what that what that illness is about. Yeah, yeah right. right. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, um, could you share with us uh, how the call came about uh, to record with Joan Jet and how that recording session went? <clears throat> Another word that gets tossed around easily these days is surreal, but that absolutely describes this situation. <clears throat> I was playing with the Lester Kings in Maplewood, New Jersey, and we were backing up Wanda Jackson, the queen of rockabilly. Yeah. I'm thinking, well, this, that's enough right there, huh? I mean, anyway, it, the gig went well, I, I'd say, but that wasn't the point. The point was that in the audience that night was Joan Jett and her manager, Kenny Lagoon, <clears throat> who has um, wow. been with her forever. Cool. And uh, they, they, were there to see Wanda because they were planning on a Wanda Jackson album, a kind of a contribute, a collaborative uh, album with a lot of different people uh -huh. of the young people, of the good singers of the day who I must admit, I didn't know a lot of them because I'm really kind of out of touch with the modern world, it just turns out. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so anyway, they were there to hear her and um, when the show was over, this lovely young woman came up to me with a card and said, Joan would love for you to reach out to her. I'm thinking, okay, sure she would. But it was that like a really cool Black Hearts card. And I think, oh, I'm going to show everybody this thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I figured that was the end of it. You know, that was good enough for me. And um, quite a bit of time went by, maybe a, maybe a year or so, I get a call from a guy named Ed Sargent, who was Joan Jett's road manager. Nice uh -huh. guy asking me if I would consider going down to New York to record uh, five tunes for the new record, the oh. Walter Jackson record with Joan. I was like, sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the next thing I know, I'm driving down. I, you know, they sent me up these MP3s, no vocal uh, reference on there, just kind of a series of chord changes. I kind of mapped it out, said, okay, here goes nothing. And I drove down to New York, but they couldn't find out. <laughs> Couldn't find a piano player at all of New York City, apparently, to do this thing. So there I am, walking in like the country mouse, you know, in the, in the big city. It was, it was so, but I'd say I did a, a good job. I, I, oh, I'm sure you did. <laughs> anyway. On, on yeah, my, I mean, you know, they, she heard something, uh, like we all do, that who, you know, I, I know you're yes. modest about it, but yes, man. You know what? I've been very lucky. Very lucky, Marcus. I, I, there's no doubt about that. I've had some good yeah. work along the way for sure. Uh, um, so was Joan Jett at the studio or were you just doing yeah, all she was there. Oh, okay. Yeah. So she was there singing when you- I a, a, an a, a CD from my daughter-in-law. She still has it. Oh, nice, yeah. nice, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that, that must, def well, I, I can see why she would hire you. <laughs> well, heartbeat. You got a good handle on a lot of different things. Um, could you tell us a little bit about uh, your intentions behind your latest crew, uh, the Hammerhead Sharks? Hammerhead Horn. Horns. Hammerhead Horn. Oh, my mistake. Yep. That's Hammerhead it. Horns. Okay, that's all right. Yep. Um, it's funny because Bob Button, and you know Bob, we played yep. together with Bob. Yeah. Um, called me, and there was going to be a street festival in Millbrook where he now lives, yep. and asked me if I could throw together a group. I'm thinking, and I started kicking this idea around for a while anyway. I'm thinking, you know what? I think to do just like some old time blues. I mean, like 20s and 30s and, and, and up. But, you know, the real pure stuff with just piano, um, yeah. a, a little drums kit, like a cocktail kit, and a couple of horns. And I mm -hmm. 
I knew Bob would be in on it, and I was thinking of Jeff all along. But then I figured, well, Bob's busy, you know, promoting this thing and organizing it all. But I asked him anyway if he'd be interested in playing trumpet with us, and he said he would. And it just just clicked. It's one of those deals where, like, I yeah. thought it would be good, and it is good, and it's turned out to be more than just good. It's turned out to be catching on like wildfire. We're getting people are calling for gigs oh, and wonderful. Really digging it. You know, they, they really, it's yeah. really working. And and it's like, go figure, right? It's another yeah. lucky break in my series of good luck. You really got a, a crew of all stars there, though. I mean, Bob Assini is just a fantastic drummer. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and Jeff, I mean, I've worked with all these guys this year. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, there's not a slacker in the crowd, man. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Yeah, but great. but it's not even it's not even the virtuosity if I can use that term I don't and I'm not necessarily using it but it's more of just the the, the fun aspect and the looseness yeah. of it and it's just this whole vibe that the people just seem to really get and, and enjoy so cool yeah I'm really excited about that right now and it's easy to play there's not a lot of wires and a lot of <laughs> you know, a piano a, a cocktail kit. The drummer's the only guy in the group that stands. Everyone else is sitting down. It's just, we could set up on a street corner or a yeah, yeah. corner of or any room, not take up a lot of space. And, and it's an instant party, you know? So. I like that instant party. You, you <laughs> might have a hook there for that. Maybe. <laughs> Your instant party, the hammerhead <laughs> horns. I'm not sure that's mine, but. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Um, well, um, here's a two part question. Mm -hmm. uh, when you write your own songs, how do you go about it? And the second part of that question is, uh, what do you think makes a song have staying power? You know, certain songs are just kind of iconic. I'm a melody guy. I, I think uh -huh. you can figure out uh, the exact right combination of notes to make people remember and hum along. That's not a bad thing. Yeah. So if you can get that, which is, believe me, hard to do. I've tried a lot of times and probably never succeeded, but come close now and then. Um, that's first. Lyrically, I, you know, if I can come up with a clever turn of phrase here and there, or, you know, just a, maybe a different outlook on a, a subject that's been done a million times before, I'm not any kind of prolific writer. I don't claim to be. But if you can make something as less cliche as you can get away with and still, you know, and combine that with a, with a good solid melody you know and a nice song construction you know it's just this basic stuff but if you can do what the good guys have done what the beatles did if you think yeah like write a beatles song but i mean use that as a blueprint as a sure then uh that's the, kind of my, my approach to it and we'll see what happens at the end and you know what it starts out as one thing and it ends up as something completely different yeah. and you're a, a band and it's always for the better somebody will come up with a great idea i can't tell you how many songs jerry bailed out of mine that jerry just you know bailed out and really made much so much better with his ideas and, and vice versa probably too yeah yeah i think you i think you're exactly right about that uh even in instrumental music, any recording session I've ever done over the years, somebody was going to bring something that I never thought of. Sure, you know, and, of course. And it makes yes. it all happen. You know, it, it's interesting how that, that chemistry happens when you get people in a studio. They hear things, you know, they've got their own ears, and that's great. Collaboration is, is a great thing. It, it is. It is, and I'm afraid it's uh, there's less of it nowadays with so many machines. And I myself am guilty. Of I know I'm an old guy, too, Mark. <laughs> well, you know, studio time can be expensive, but uh, we seem to have a pretty good barter system in, among many of us. But um, it can be expensive, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that is a little prohibitive. But uh, well, uh, going onward here, um, having worked in the 518 area for quite a long time. Uh, how do you think the work opportunities in, in our area have changed over the years? Well, we're making exactly the same money we made uh, 30 years ago. I can say that. <laughs> yeah. that, that has not changed. <laughs> but, uh, um, it depends. I, I find that there's, there's less clubs. We used to play a lot of clubs and now it doesn't seem like there's as many of those opportunities, but yet there are, I have to say, uh, and once again, I've been very lucky, but I'm, I've never been busier in my life than I am this summer. I, I've had, mm. my, my 
calendar is full of just different bands with different gigs and different kinds of parties, weddings, breweries, you know, what, whatever. They, there's all sorts of opportunities out there for, for playing. If, you, if you're lucky enough to get your foot in the door, which is the, the, the tough part. Yeah. I, and, um, well, having worked with you, I, I know you can wear a lot of musical hats, you know, whether it's uh, the simplest rockabilly song or even a jazz ballad. And I, I, think, I try with the jazz. I'm, I'm no Marcus Benoit, but I try. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I, I have not uh, really been immersed in the world of jazz in our area for a while now. Um, I had a good run with it in my time. Uh, but anyhow, um, so um, as I get to my end of this uh, interview part here, uh, I, I want to thank you, Mike, for sharing your time and music with us at Empire Radio Sounds. I want to tell you what a pleasure it's been every time that you and I get to play and share the bandstand, whether it be the Luster Kings or BB in the uh, drive-bys, et cetera. It's always a blast, man. Um, do you have any gigs or upcoming recording projects you want to mention before we sign off? Hmm, good question. Well, you and I just contributed on a, a, a Mark Calkin record that sounds really good, doesn't oh, it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, nice, and right? You, yeah, I'm, I'm really, have you heard it with the horns that we added? I heard, sounds fantastic, very Thank nice. you, thank you. Yeah, that exactly, was a, yeah. Good yeah, songs. There was, that's the most recent. I, I, I played on my friend Leslie Barkman's album. This oh, yeah, it just needs to go. That was really good. Yeah. Uh, as far as recording, I don't know if I've got anything on the books right now. Big, yeah, no, nothing right now. Gigs, uh, the gigs just keep coming. The Hammerheads are starting to play more and more. And uh, Wonderful. a lot of other bands that you mentioned are, are have gigs coming up. The Luster Kings, I play with still regularly all summer. They've got a yeah. nice you know, run of, of gigs all, year long, all summer long, I should say. You never, you never know who's going to be in the band. With, no, with, you with don't. Luster Kings from night I to know, night. But we, we do this, <laughs> we do this Friday gig every every Friday for two months, July and August, and I'll get there, and it could be anybody on drums or anybody on bass. I never. The only, the only constant is big, the big guy, Mark. Yeah, yeah, and and I'll and I'll say this: they're all wonderful, top-notch players. You yeah, know? well, he that's why he's not you. Great players. That's well, I appreciate that, you. but. You know, it's been a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, well, again, Mike, thank you so much for sharing your time and music. And um, we hope to see you around town again soon. Okay. And in one of these bands, okay? Yeah, thanks. Okay. Try.
Some direction, girl, that's 